What if I told you that you could get more performance out of your existing? <clears throat> that sucked. Let's redo it. Hi, and welcome back to E-Rock on Deck. My name is Eric, I go by E-Rock, and today we're talking about how to overclock your GPU. Now you may have some questions about overclocking a GPU, such as how much does it cost? Is it safe? Is it even worth your time and effort to go through the process of overclocking the GPU? And I'm gonna answer all of those questions starting right now. Now in terms of how much does it cost to overclock your GPU, the answer is it's free. It won't cost you anything except, well, maybe a like on this video. Now, in terms of is it safe to overclock the GPU, the answer is yes, 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt. I have overclocked my GPU, I have friends who have overclocked theirs, and the software we're gonna use today will not allow you to break the GPU. This is 100% safe, so do not worry about that. And the final question is, is it worth your time and effort to go through the process of overclocking the GPU? And my opinion is yes, it's gonna be worth it, but I'm gonna show you some benchmarks later on in the video of Apex Legends, both with and without an overclock, and you're gonna be able to see the performance difference. And to me, that confirms it is worth your time to go through and overclock a GPU, but ultimately it's gonna be up to you to decide that for yourself. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into overclocking and let's talk more about it. So when it comes to overclocking, you actually have a wide variety of options. For example, you can actually buy a graphics card out of the box already with an overclock on it. You won't have to do anything. Just walk into your local retail store or order one online. Boom, it's overclocked and you're good to go. That's actually a very viable option. My previous card, the 5700 XT Red Devil was actually a factory overclocked card. So that is an option for you if you don't wanna go through the process of overclocking your card yourself. Now, the second option you have is to use some form of software to do an auto overclock of your GPU. So an example of this would be NVIDIA's GeForce Experience. It has a built-in auto overclock feature for NVIDIA graphics cards. Or MSI Afterburner also has a built-in auto overclock feature. But both of these options have their problems. For example, the GeForce Experience literally says it's an experimental feature, which means it's not even finalized yet. It's not stable. I tried it and it took 30 minutes to apply the overclock. And then at the end, it said it wasn't stable and it reverted back to my original settings for my graphics card. It was literally a waste of my time. The MSI Afterburner one is, you know, a little bit more well polished and it does work overall, but it has not yet been updated at the time of filming for newer graphics cards. So I have an RTX 3070 Founders Edition and the auto overclocking feature for MSI Afterburner will not work on my graphics card. However, my buddy, The Real Flock, whom you've probably seen me stream with a couple of times, he actually has a 2070 Super and he was able to utilize this auto overclocking feature with MSI Afterburner. So again, for some cards it works fine, for some cards it doesn't. But even if you get it to work, what you have to understand is these programs are programmed to leave performance on the table. They will not push your card as far as it can go. An auto overclock will never give you the full benefit of an overclock. It will be better than what you had out of the box. It'd be better than nothing, but it will not give you the full experience. So it is my recommendation to always perform a manual overclock. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Now, when it comes to manually overclocking your GPU, you have two viable options. The first option is that you can do a manual overclock where it's completely trial and error and you go through the settings, you run benchmarks and you fine tune your card yourself. And we're gonna do a tutorial on that here in just a second. The second option is to go to a website where someone has already done all of that work for your specific card and take those settings and go ahead and apply it inside of MSI Afterburner and boom, you're good to go. And that's honestly what I do recommend for most people. The website that I found is the fpsreview.com. I went to that website, I typed in my card, RTX 3070 Founders Edition. I was able to read up on all the research that they performed and I found out that the settings they came up with is basically the best settings for my card. I applied those settings to my card. It was a stable overclock. It gave me a radical performance increase. And then using that as a foundation, I was able to do more trial and error testing and get just a little bit more performance out of that overclock. 
And so I was able to push it just a little bit further than what they were able to do. But you can honestly argue that that comes down to margin of error or even the Silicon lottery. So I highly recommend this website if you're not looking to do the manual fine tuning process on your own. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the bread and butter of this video, which is how do you perform a manual overclock from scratch? And this is how we're gonna do it. Okay, so we have MSI Afterburner pulled up and I'm gonna have a link in the description below where you can go and install this. Now, this is a completely free piece of software. It will not cost you anything. And even though it is made by MSI, you do not have to have an MSI graphics card in order for this to work. It will work on any graphics card. Now, during the installation process, it will ask you if you wanna install another piece of software called Combustor. You want to say, yes, install Combustor. This will be your benchmarking software that will allow you to overclock your graphics card more accurately. The second thing you need to know about this is that once you have this installed, it may not look like this. It may have some type of other skin on it. That's fine. If you want it to look like this, all you need to do is locate your gear icon or your settings icon. And once that menu pops up, you're gonna find where it says user interface. Click on user interface and you're gonna be able to go down and choose which type of profile you want. So for example, I'm using MSI Cyborg Afterburner. Uh, it's, a, it's a custom skin, but there's all these other skins that you can use. Um, and more than likely, this will not be the default look that yours comes with. So if you wanna change it, that's how you change it. But once you find a skin you're happy with, you're gonna click apply and then click okay and boom, you're back to home. So the first thing you have to do is to establish a baseline of where your card currently is. And the reason why you want to know this is because you want to know how much performance you're actually getting with your overclock. And so the best way to do that is you're going to go up here, top left hand corner, you're going to see a letter K, it's going to stand for combustor. You're going to click on it and then you're going to get a piece of software pop up that looks very similar to this right here. Now you're going to be able to run a stress test or benchmark it at 1080p, benchmark it at 1440p or benchmark it at 4K. I game in 1440p, so I'm going to run the 1440p test. However, if you game in 1080p, then you would run the 1080p option 4K, 4K. So you get the point. So you're gonna click on the preset that you want and ultimately you're gonna get a screen that looks very similar to this. And at the very end of the test, you're gonna have an overall score with a frame rate next to it. And that's gonna be your baseline. And what this test is doing is, is stress testing your card at its current settings. And it's trying to see how far it can push it. And tests like this are rendering very detailed graphics to really stress your card and so at the end of this you're going to use the score as a baseline and then from there you're going to be able to see how much further you're able to push it so now we have our baseline test completed so what this means is that we have a baseline score of 3243 at 54 fps and so the goal would be to overclock the card come back, run this test again, and see if we can still run the test without crashing the card and make sure that the numbers continue to go higher and higher. And then basically you're gonna rinse and repeat until you eventually find the theoretical limit of your card. So basically you would escape out of the application, close the application down, and then you would come over here and you would start to play with these settings. So let me go ahead and show you a couple of things that you can do very quickly that will make a big difference already. And that is you're gonna take this slider right here underneath this power limit and you're gonna pull it all the way over to the right. And when you do that, it's automatically gonna pull the temp limit all the way over to the right as well. And it's gonna max both of these out. And then you're gonna hit this check mark to apply your changes. Now what this is doing is it's telling the system that it's okay to pull the maximum amount of power for your card. And this is gonna allow your card to have all the power it needs to run the overclock and to perform at its peak potential. Now the next thing you're gonna need to do is to take this core voltage and slide it all the way over to the right as well. And this is gonna be important for us to manipulate the core clock and the memory clock. Again, you're gonna hit the check mark to apply the change. Talking about core clock and memory clock, that's that's really the bread and butter in the overall overclocking process. So a lot of people will attempt to manipulate these numbers at the exact same time and that can work but it can also be confusing because once you hit your limit and you start to crash and you need to dial it back, you're not going to really know if it's your core clock or your memory clock causing the bottleneck. So I always start with one and then work my way over to the other. So let's start with core clock. Now your core clock, you're not gonna be able to push it as far as you are the memory clock. I like to start with an interval of about 
35 or 40. So what you would want to do is you would want to click in this area right here where you see the white numbers. And what you're going to be able to do after you click in there is simply start typing numbers and then hit enter. And now that number will be applied. Again, click the check mark. And then the next thing you would do after making a change is go back to combustor and run the exact same test. And now here's what you're trying to confirm. You're trying to confirm that the test will run. The test will run to completion without failing. And finally, you want to confirm that the numbers are in fact higher than what they were before. So if we run this test again, ideally we should have more frames and an overall higher score than what we just had previously. In fact, let's run the test and let's see what happens. Okay, so our test completed and as you can see, the numbers did in fact go up. Now, it wasn't a massive jump, but again, are already starting to go in the right direction, which is up. What that confirmed for us was that we were able to complete the test. There was no weird type of artifacting or coloring or anything like that. So what I would do here is I would come back, I would add another 35 to it, which would bump it up to 70, apply, go back to combustor, rinse and repeat. And I would keep doing that until I found my limit for the core clock. And once I found my limit, something weird would happen like there would be a crash or something of that nature or some type of weird coloring going on, but something obviously would be wrong. Once you find that limit, then you know that's as far as you can push your card and it's time to dial it back maybe one interval or so. So if you're going in intervals of 10, for example, and 110 breaks your card, dial it back down to 100, set it there, move on to your memory clock. Now we can move on to memory clock. Now, memory clock, you're gonna do the exact same thing you just did with the core clock, but here's the kicker. Almost all modern cards can start off with a base increase of 500. So that means you can come over to the memory clock, click in your white area right here on this number, type in 500, hit enter, and then hit the check mark to apply, and now run your benchmarking test and make sure everything checks out, everything's fine. Again, you're gonna rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat until you find that limit. And then once you find that limit, you're gonna dial it back, and that's gonna be the overall highest overclock settings for your card. But that does not mean it will be the best overclock settings or the most stable or the most optimized or anything of that nature. And this is where overclocking can become just a little bit annoying. So you can max your card out to its maximum potential, but only some games or some applications will actually be able to run it at those settings. A prime example is I was streaming Remnant from the Ashes with the real flock just a few weeks ago. And as we were playing through the game on stream, the game kept crashing on me. The reason why was because my overclock was too high. I had to dial my overclock back just a little bit and then it was able to work out perfectly fine. And so now the overclock settings that I've ended up with after testing and playing around with multiple games and streaming with multiple games and, and seeing what crashes and what doesn't is basically the original settings that I got from the fpsreview.com plus five points on the core clock. That's it. This is stable. It runs very well. Virtually no games crash on me with these settings right here. And it gives me an astronomical boost in overall performance. Let's run that test one more time. Let me show you what my results are now. So now you can see we have our final score, which is an even 3,400 points with 56 FPS, which is two or three frames higher than what our initial baseline was. And again, I know that does not sound that impressive, but these are synthetic benchmarks and they do not necessarily translate over to gaming. Speaking of gaming, I told you that I have Apex Legends gameplay running with and without an overclock. And I'm going to show you that gameplay right now and we're going to talk about it. And I think you're going to be able to see just how much an overclock can really improve the overall performance of a graphics card. So here we're running Apex Legends without the overclock and you can see very clearly 
coming in, we're averaging a frame rate of 132 FPS, which is not bad at all. This is 1440p, maxed out graphical settings. And you can see the actual frame rate that we're experiencing is all over the board. It temporarily peaked up at 155, did not stay there long. And now we're hovering all over the place between 130s to 150s and back and forth. But that average frame rate is holding fairly consistent at 132 and it just now peaked up to 133. But this is about as far as it's gonna go. Now we're watching Apex Legends with the overclock. And as you can see, the average frame rate is at 147 FPS. And the frame rate that we're experiencing is similar to the other one all over the place, but we are holding a little bit more consistent at that 155 at times for a little bit longer. But that average frame rate is 147 FPS. So as you can see, that is a pretty substantial upgrade for just a little bit of work, a little bit of time, and we're a whole tier higher in terms of FPS. So when people ask the question, is it worth the time and effort to go through and overclock a GPU? I think this proves it. I think this says, yes, it is definitely worth your time and effort. Well, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I really hope you learned something. And if you did, definitely hit that like button. It goes a long way in helping me out. I really appreciate it. And by the way, if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I would love to have you be part of the E-Rock on Deck community. I would love to get to know you and build some rapport. So hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the video and let me know what else you would like to see from me, what other types of tutorials. I'm happy to make anything you want. And until next time, E-Rock out. Yeah, what's the strategy, John? Getting the Warhog. They, ju they just got a new snipe. That sniper's weak right next to you, John. I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. I got sniped now too. Alright, well look, dude, you gotta get in the board. Oh, Whoa! Right. John! Die. <laughs> yeah.